Yo! And it looks like it's gonna have to be more fun to go out and pack it. So it looks like you're about that. Who needs the whole shit? John and It's never going to seal. The tire grease. Going with a Bridgestone next try. Bridgestone. Everyone says in Japan, everyone says Bridgestone are the best. So that's what we're going to use. They weren't that expensive. Four tires for two hundred and twenty dollars, the equivalent of two hundred twenty dollars, or twenty-two thousand yen for four. It's not bad. Hopefully, they'll last me a long time. Um, they're non-directional, which means I don't have to worry about which way they go on. Find the yellow dot and line that up with the valve. Although, I did prove that that doesn't make a difference. A lot of people will um, uh, claim that if you don't do this, if you don't line this up with the valve, then you're, you're shoddy or... Um, that it's going to make some huge balancing difference, but I actually tried it. I have a balancer here, um, and it made no difference at all. If you can't get it, if you can't get it close, don't even worry about it because it's like, I, maybe if you're buying crappy tires or something, um, you know the old R and B round and black. Um, maybe that'll make a difference, but on Kenders. It, it's like we're talking five grams and five grams you can't feel anyway I'm told my tire machines a bit fancy because it's got one of these on a helper arm it helps push the tire down you don't need this you can use a spoon but because I've got it why not use it so you don't have to go very far down and you just spin it now here's a point if it looks like, if it looks like the tire, or this is going to go up over the tire, stop, make this, well, take this back up again and move it back over to there and it will go on without a problem. Figured that out the hard way, but this one looks like it's going to be okay. Nope, there we go, it just did it. It did exactly what I said. See that? See how it popped up over the top like that? So what we'll do is we'll reset it and then I'll show you how to get around that. Easiest thing to do is to release it. We haven't damaged the tire at all. The bead's still fine. So line that back up again. We're gonna have to get the get this back in here. Very easy to do on this tire, not so easy to do on a Kenda. Get that back in there. Right, so line that back up again. Here we go again. So this time we're gonna go, what are we stuck on? Oh nothing, we're okay. I think. Swing it around. Oh, this time we might be okay, actually. Yeah, no, this time we might be no problem at all. 
actually. Let's just How's that? Perfectly lined up. As I say though, it makes next to no difference. And because this, um, this valve is quite recessed, see that? For that flush finish. Flush finish. I have to... Flush finish. I have to use one of these. Uh, this was donated to me by um, a good friend. However, this is uh, off a truck. And this is too long, so I modified it, cut it down so that it's the correct length to use on a car. Okay, now before you put air in it, you want to just let go of that, pop it off, close it up, sit it back down again. These are a 10 mil, so you can just do that to get at them. Easy. There's the other three. Alright, I thought I'd do a little bit of a how-to on wheel balancing, seeing I'm here. Um, first you need a wheel balancer. Ta-da! Turn it on. It's going to come up like this. Second thing you need to do is put your wheel on the machine. Put your wheel on through the center hole. And your machine will have a bunch of these things. Um, now, they are to locate the wheel. So you just find the one that fits the best, um, and then use that one. For this, In this case, it's a bigger one, but on my 17s, it's this one. So it just, I don't know, depends on the wheel. Try this on here. Lift up the wheel. Get that in there. Slide this on. This is uh, so that you can skip all the threads. Once you get to the end, Crank it down, get it on there, you know, pretty tight, doesn't have to be crazy tight. Um, the second thing you want to do um, is make sure that nothing is going to touch. Yes, there's a lot of crap. Yes, there's a lot of crap on the ground here, but it's all clear. Like, there's quite, it doesn't look like it, but there's a lot of distance between the junk and the wheel, so we have, on the tire rather. So we, we, we're not going to have anything touch, so we're okay, even though it looks dodgy as all hell. So the first thing you need to do is set the distance. The distance is from the machine to the edge there. So the way we do that is we use this little arm here, and we move it so that it touches like in the picture. And we should have 85, which we do. So we just adjust this until it says 85. Now I know these wheels, so I don't need to check this. Um, you need the BR, which is going to be the whatever J. So these are a 5J wheel. So we're going to set this to 5J. There we go. It's already there, that's lucky. And these are a 15 inch. So this one here is the diameter, DIA. Going to set that to 15, done. Okay, so once you've got all your settings done, your distance, your whatever, your width, your J, whatever J it is, um, and the diameter, you're ready to go. So what you're going to do is you're going to give it a bit of a push over here. Um, I'm going to have to move you to see it. See this arrow? That shows you which direction the wheel will spin in. You want to give the wheel a push in that direction to help the motor, otherwise um, it puts too much strain on the on the motor and you wear it out faster. So you give that a push, hit the start button and away she goes. And that's it. Okay, so we have checked it and we found that on the outside we are 10 grams out and on, sorry, 
yeah, on the sorry, the inside. On the inside we're 10 grams out, and the outside we're 35 grams out. What does that mean and how do we fix it? So I didn't before I started, I didn't take off whatever weights were already on it because I figured you might get lucky. I've gotten lucky before where um, the weights that were on it were enough. I found that there's a weight down in here, so I'll need to remove that um, because we'll be starting again. So get yourself a spatula or a, a whatever kind of scraper you have and just remove the real weights that are on it. So this had 20 on the outer. Now, that because I've removed this 20, our, our um, result is going to be different now. So we've removed all of the weights that were on it. So let's try it again. Spin her up, hit start, and away we go. Okay, so we've changed. We're only 20 out on the outer now, and we're 15 out on the inner. Um, so what are we going to do? Well, five out either side, you will not feel, I'm told. I haven't tested it, um, but, you know, the guy I used to go to for balancing told me that. So that is gospel to me. Right, so how do we, um, how do we get rid of these numbers? Well, first thing you're going to need to do is to figure out what, what on earth do these things mean? Well, when you spin the wheel, rotate the wheel, you can see that it moves around and what that's telling me is that right now when it's all lit up I need to put this weight at this point this point is at directly 12 o'clock um, now I'm not sure I'm gonna put 20 on there I might put 15 on here and then spin it and see how we go because I have found that often you can get away with using less weight if you're clever. So this is just regular brake cleaner and I'm just cleaning the inside of the wheel at 12 o'clock where this matches up so that I can put on my new wheel weights. Oh, it's right where the valve is. That's interesting. Okay, so we're clean. Now we need 20. Um, do I have 20? I don't have 20 easily available. So, I'm going to start up a new one. We do 15 or we do 20? Um, hmm. Try 20. Do what it says. Do what the man says. So, peel the backing off. Line it up the best you can. Have a bit of a look if you if you want. Get it to 12 o'clock as close to as close to the outside as possible. Press it on nice and hard, and it'll stay there. If it falls off, and you have your own machine. You just press it on again. Right, yo. I put that on. I want to see if that if this changing this affects that. So let's check that. I have a feeling it will. That will probably drop to 10 or go up to 20. There you go. As I said, it dropped to 10. So if I had have done this side and this side at the same time, it might have gone 0, 0, but it might have also gone 5 the opposite direction, right? So do one side at a time. Um, and even if you if you know your machine and you know the wheel, you might be able to remember that if I do 25 on this side, um, sorry, if I had have done 20 or even 15 on this side, then it might have it might have balanced. So it says 10 here. Now I'm tempted to put five here, but I won't. I'll do what the machine says. Right. So. Line this up again with 12 o'clock, and we're on the inner side, this side, so it's this time, this side, this time. Give that a good rub down, get as much of the dirt off as you can, it's nice and dirty. This requires 10, so... Just get a tenner. 
take the backing off, line it up with 12 o'clock, as close to the outside as possible. Press that on, we're on. Give it a push, hit the start button, and we should be balanced. Zero, zero. That's it. That's how you do it. All right, push down on here so that you break it. Not break it, so that you get it moving. You can use this handle to slide it all the way off. Take your little coney thing off, remove your wheel, and you're good to drive. I just spun this one up and it had quite a bit of weight on it, and that reminded me of a tip I wanted to share with you. When you're buying wheels on Yahoo Auction or anywhere for that matter, and you're buying them sight unseen, you're just looking at photos, have a look how many wheel weights are inside the wheel. If there's a lot of them, it's chances are the wheel's buckled, it's bent and they're making it straight by using a lot of weights. If there's no weights in it, or very few weights in it, then it's probably a good wheel. Okay, so I've spun this one up, and um, as you can see, I'm at 30. I've added 10 to the inside, um, and when I did that changed from this changed from 25 to 30 So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore that. I don't want to put 20. I don't want to put 30 on there I'm going to put on mm, I'm going to put 20 on there and see what happens. I've got actually I've got what have I got here? I got uh, 10 20. I've got 30 here, but I'm not doing it. I don't want to I'm going to put 25 on Right, let's see what it does What happens when you ignore the machine? Well, you think you know better than the machine. Where are we? 12 o'clock. There we go. Do I know better than this machine? And this isn't, this, this trick, if this works, I just want to say that it isn't just this machine. Um, done this on Italian machines as well. So, it's not just, oops, because it's Chinese. No. Works on other machines as well. Right, I'm putting 25 on because I can. Because I want to. Right. Right. I think the reason this works is because you can't put 30 bang right on this. Not with using these. If you stacked them, then that might work. But these are in a strip, right? So you can't get 30 right on this point. You're adding... 30 spread across a, um, a distance. So I added 25 here. Let's spin it and see what happens. Winning. See that? Ta da! Perfect. Before and after. Let me know what you think. And that is it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please press the like button. If you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell as well. Otherwise, YouTube won't let you know when I make videos. If you'd like to support the channel, head on over to garagek.com and pick yourself up a sticker. Or you can support the show by putting your name on the Garage K door. Details on how to do that are in the description, or you can do that directly at garagek.com. Um, yeah, that's it. See you in the next episode. Later.